God bless you, WME family, and welcome back. Thank you for taking time out of your day, evening, or morning, whatever time you're watching this program, to be a part of this program. Thank you, and God bless you. We want to talk today about uh, Daniel chapter 5. And in Daniel chapter 5, we see a very interesting story take place. And I think this is very important for us to pay attention and to see what God is telling us through this story. Now, the Bible tells us in, in Daniel chapter 5, and Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. And Belshazzar tasted the wine and he, he threw this big party and he sent for the gold and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem. And here they are having this party. And the Bible tells us that the wives were there. The concubines were there. It was a, a, it was a big celebration. And, and they had uh, brought the, the golden uh, vessels and the silver vessels. And it, it, they were living it up. They were uh, having a good time. And, and so the party was on. Everything was, was a, a hit. Uh, and when we look at who Belshazzar was... It's in all likelihood he was not the son of Nebuchadnezzar. He was the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar. Now the term father is used here because many times uh, uh, that's just that would be an expression that would be used also for a grandfather, a great grandfather. It, that would mean that that was part of the legacy, uh, as as we we would mention our forefathers here in the nation or in, in, in biblical times, the patriarchs were known as also as the fathers of the faith. And so, uh, in all likelihood, that was probably his grandson. And uh, he was a, a young king, a young ruler. All was going well. Uh, they were living it up. They were having a, a celebration. They were uh, whining and dining. No cares at all. Uh, and when you live for the moment... When you live for the here and now, you tend to forget about eternity. When you live for the uh, pleasure of the moment, and that's the, the type of society that we have today. We have a society that lives uh, for the here and now. It's a very self-centered society. It's a, it's a pleasure society. It's a society that only cares about itself. It's a society that's, con that's uh, consumed with feeling good. And so here they were having a party. Here they were living it up. And all of a sudden a hand appears. And the Bible tells us here in Daniel chapter 5 that as the hand appears, it began to write on a wall. And uh, the writing on the wall troubled uh, Belshazzar. He didn't understand what... what that writing what was being told to him but he knew the Bible says that his countenance changed uh, he, he immediately called a halt to the party uh, uh, he knew something was coming and this is where you, we get the expression the writings on the wall and whenever we see or hear that expression the writing on the wall we know that it has to do with uh, as something is is coming, it's evident, it's uh, it's apparent, and so when we see the writing on the wall, that's as a, a warning. And whenever we you we hear that expression, well, uh, he or she saw the writing on the wall. They saw what was to come, and so this frightened Belshazzar. This called him to stop the party. And uh, he called for the, the magicians, he called for the uh, astrologers, he called for these uh, people who would do divination to try to interpret the writing on the wall, to try to explain the situation. And they didn't have an explanation. They didn't know why it was happening or, or what the writing meant. And so it baffled everybody involved. But... Belshazzar knew that there was something about this writing. He knew that God was speaking to him. And there are many people who are watching today that know that God is speaking to them. 
that know that God is talking to them, that know that God is trying to get their attention. Uh, you can't keep going on the way you've been going on. You can't keep living the way you've been living. It's time to get right with God. It's time to have a, what we, would, we used to say, a, a, a come to Jesus moment. Uh, and so here he is. And he sees this, this writing, and there's no one who can explain this writing to him. There's nobody who can answer uh, the question, what does this mean? What is God trying to tell me? And so uh, his wife suggests Daniel. She said, there's a man who knows all the mysteries. The Most High has revealed these things to him. And uh, he was also probably brought in because being a Hebrew, uh, he, he, they probably assumed that this writing was a, a writing that he would be able to identify with. But overall, they knew, his wife knew, that uh, God had showed him many things and that he was a, a, a man of God and that God revealed to him all mysteries. And so they sent for Daniel. And they knew that in Daniel would, would come up with the solution, the answer. And see, we have the answer today. We have the solution. It's found in Christ. It's not found in, in, in a, a political party. It's not found in this world system because this world system is corrupt. This world system is... is uh, is uh, been weighed in the balances as well, and it's been found to, 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 to not work. Man's way of religion doesn't work. It's not about religion. It's about a, 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 a relationship. It's about a relationship with God. It's about coming to, to Christ. It's about recognizing that you need God. And so they sent for Daniel. And Daniel has the interpretation. Uh, with part two, and we're going to look at what is God trying to tell Belshazzar? What is the warning that God is trying to give him? For so much of the world, in places that world missionary evangelism has missions, water is not there. And when it is, it's not safe. World missionary evangelism for more than 50 years has drilled and dug water wells. And we've done it more than just to supply a community with water. We've done it to save lives. Because the largest killer in most third world countries is fouled or polluted water. So our water programs have saved thousands of lives. Not long ago, we drilled a well in Kenya. And a man who watched the water coming out of the ground, an elder in a Maasai community, walked up to our president and said, did your God do this? And essentially, yes, he did. It has changed an entire community. That water well began it, but now there's education through schools. There's children's programs. There are churches. There are so many other things going on thanks to a gift of water. The next time you drink a glass of water from your tap, remember, it's pure gold in many parts of the world. The next time you pour a glass of water out, think that you're pouring out something that someone else would treasure more than anything else.